Hey there, Miranda Wilson here with another lesson idea to go along with our adapted articles. Our goal is to highlight and explain some of the additional resources we've curated to help with your lesson planning. Today, we'll focus on the article titled, What Was Life Like in Medieval England? Tian Yu Wang and his colleagues compared different groups of people from Cambridge, England in the Middle Ages. They took samples from burials of Augustinian friars and common laborers to examine their parasite loads. Turns out that the Augustinian friars, who had better access to food, access to running water, and more sanitary toilets, actually had a higher percentage of people with intestinal worms than the common laborers. The researchers think this may make sense if the friars used human poop as manure for their gardens then they would have been more likely to eat vegetables with parasite eggs on them and get infected. Your students are sure to love this cringe-worthy story about parasites. We know that sometimes students can find reading articles, even adapted ones, a bit tedious. So we've curated links to some additional resources that could round out your lesson plans with experiments and hands-on activities. Today, we're going to focus on a really cool activity for elementary school students that can go along with this article, or really any of our articles that have to do with parasites or human health. You can read the article and do the activity in any order you prefer. Students should be able to understand both without much background information. This activity is part of a collection of lessons by WonderWise, a program through the University of Nebraska State Museum. There are five different lessons about parasites. The activity we'll be talking about today is called Parasite Sleuth. Just like the title suggests, your students will become detectives trying to figure out which parasites infected which humans. It's also a great introduction to scientific case studies. Students are presented with four different written scenarios. They have to use clues in the scenario to figure out what parasite has infected the person and how it got transmitted. The structure of the activity has students working on their reading skills and then challenges them to see patterns and logic in what they're reading. At the same time, they're learning all about common parasites that can infect humans, how we can get infected, and what the impacts are to our health. Your students may get grossed out, but they'll certainly learn a lot. Make sure to check out our other articles on parasites like why are some parasites picky eaters? Or how do nematodes learn to find a host? If you're more interested in talking about archeology span in general with your students, we'd recommend where did the first people in the Caribbean come from? This article comes with detailed lesson plans created by educators here at the Science Journal for Kids and includes an interview with the researchers. There's even an episode in our Lesson Ideas podcast discussing the background for the article and a detailed explanation of the lesson plan. Don't forget to take a look at our videos at the bottom of the article page when you're planning your class time. There's always a video meant to introduce the topic of the article to your students. For each adapted article, we also provide an audio version of the article being read for those students who might need some extra help with their reading skills. You can access our audio versions on the web page for each adapted article or on the Science Journal for Kids YouTube channel. That's all for today. If you'd like more teaching tips and ideas for lesson planning, please check out the audio or video versions of our Lesson Ideas podcast. Also, make sure to check out our Ask a Scientist videos for short interviews with some of our researchers. You can find them on our YouTube channel. If you have questions or comments, please share them in the feedback form on our website. You can also sign up for our free monthly newsletter to learn about our latest content. And as always, please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.